megabytes per second to less than one half of one megabyte per second. Anybody Ooh. have, is it the heat? Call your internet else? service provider. I would reboot my router first. Yeah. Done that. Done that. Done that. Mm. And contact contact your internet service provider. Yeah, yeah. it shouldn't be that low. Yeah. You're going to have really big problems using Zoom and any communication tools when it goes that really that low. Yep. Yeah. Even yeah. even my upload isn't that slow. <laughs> yeah, my download is is actually hit a hundred this morning, but the upload is crazy. So, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I should also say that um, a lot of um, uh, internet services providers are changing their tier support level, a uh, tier level, and that's one of the features is, of course, yeah, the, the download is fast, but the upload they get you on, and they want you to move up to the next package, and they restructured that. So you may phone and say, hey, what's the matter? And they said, oh, well, we can improve your upload, but you have to just go to the next tier, right? And that's 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 ha that happens quite often. So I had an interesting one, uh, an interesting one today, last week, I got an email from Apple and Apple said, said to me, uh, oh, and I don't use, like, I'm, I'm not an Apple person. I don't, and they said your iTunes accounts, your secure, I can't remember what it says, your security settings need to be updated or there was some change. And I haven't, I haven't used iTunes in 30 years, right? So I thought this was a a scam and i sent it to bob and i said yeah this looks pretty real doesn't it <laughs> and, you know it's it it was it was interesting we should maybe show that one time maybe in our i don't do you have it bob in our q a maybe we can show the uh i i maybe i'll no, show it i sent you all the information on it including including checking the various links yeah you checked and it out. Said it, it was probably is, it legit. It is legit, right? It was legit. Yeah. That was it's, a legitimate email. Yep. Oh. That was weird. That was a weird one. Just because so, uh, you haven't used something for a while doesn't mean you didn't at one time sign yeah, up for that's it. True. That's true. And inactivity quite often winds up getting you emails from that company where you have an account but haven't had any activity for a while. Right. It's but, funny because the iTunes has been retired. So that's yeah. that's funny that you would get that kind of message. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. It was really odd. I mean, I thought it. I thought for sure it was a scam, and I couldn't oh. figure out. I couldn't really figure it out. That's why I sent it to Bob and said, "What do you think?" And he started. And I might show it in the Q and A if we've got some time. I think I've still got the uh, email. I'll show everybody, and you can have a look at it. It was it was interesting email, and but bizarre out of the out of the out of the just out of nothing it came and said, you know. We all have a lot of things we signed up for many years ago, used once or twice, and it's still there. We still have accounts there. Uh, they get sold, and somebody else gets the list, and somebody else gets the list because it gets sold again. And uh, uh, they send you an email sometimes from a company you never heard of because it's been sold so many times. You have to be careful. Sometimes these things are real or just uh, uh, because you had an old account somewhere. The worst part is way back when we weren't that conscious of using strong passwords. So yeah. those old accounts, I know I've checked on a couple of them. I said, oh, my God, I'm still using this thing that's just as uh, secure as one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. you know, Back then, we weren't that worried about passwords as long as it was a password. Back then, now there weren't that many hackers. Learned. Yep. Hey, good morning, you guys. Hey, Greg. Good morning, hey, Greg. Ray, on Thursday, when you guys were talking about that little car, that little electric car, one-seater. Oh, yeah. yeah. Somebody said, uh, how do you put anything in it? And I, I typed in trailer use a trailer with the thing what? and well that's that's what i said uh, mm -hmm. but anyway i didn't realize that it was not an interface with with everybody online that we could see everybody and all you guys did was just talk uh 
anyway, I don't think I'll be joining Thursday anymore. Well, I want you guys I, I to look at me. Up, I didn't, Greg, I didn't see it come up in the chat box. And that's yeah, where it, it came up later on. Uh, right. You know, it was I a guess comment it, you made after the show had long since ended. No, no, no. Right when you guys were talking about it, I typed it in the trailer. And uh, it wasn't until maybe five minutes later, somebody looked at it and brought it up and it goes, trailer, what's that? And just went on. Really? Yeah, but anyway, it was a good show. Yeah, we had a good, we had a good No, time. it was a lot of information there. And, and wait, that little car. We had some really cool stuff I'm going to talk about this week. This is going to be real. Well, we're all going to talk about, it, but it's going to be really interesting. I'll tell, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that today. So, uh, but lots of good stuff. There is never a lack of news. Go ahead, John. John, we're not hearing you, but you don't show up as being muted. I think you have the wrong mic selected in yeah, your settings. Yep. We can't hear you right now. You're muted. He also now you're just, unmuted. He just put something in the uh, chat box. That don't do not reply to this address, but I don't know what that's about either. You have the wrong mic selected. Always good to do the test when you sign on to Zoom for your, right. your mic and video. It just uh, that way you, you know before you start. Sorry, John. Well, if he's new, maybe uh, no, you have he's, maybe he's a member of my club. Which means, Bill, you get to do some lessons with John. Peter on. <laughs> yeah. Good. So anyway, if you just joined, good morning. It's uh, Tech for Senior. We are just sitting here having a chat before the meeting starts at nine, or sorry, starts at top of the hour. <laughs> I was going to say nine o'clock. Starts at top of the hour. And if, you, if you're new here, put up your hand, say hello. Hi, hi Elaine. Hello. I was looking at your um, index to try to find out if you had ever done segments on OneDrive. Bill James, this is for you too. Um, <laughs> I didn't find any when I went to find, but I, it seems like OneDrive has popped up on all of our computers, whether I've asked it to or not. And I'm coming up with some questions and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong or how exactly to use it. And I wondered if you would consider doing segments like Bill does on uh, Word, which I'm going to miss on Thursday because we have a doctor's appointment. Sorry, Bill. Anyway, um, like a little tutorial or something like that, or if you can refer us to somebody besides just going on YouTube and clicking on OneDrive, which gives you a plethora of things that maybe will be helpful or not, but a forum where we can get some information and then ask questions about specific problems that we're having and things that are coming up that we're not familiar with. Do you have, do you have any that are that you've done before on OneDrive? Elaine, that's a great idea. Um, I'll get Bill on it right away. <laughs> <laughs> great. I'll give him, I'll, I've, I've already written it down here on my notes, past Bill with OneDrive seminar. So we'll, uh, we'll get him on it right away. Daryl, okay. has your, Daryl, has your group ever done anything on OneDrive? Oh, other than we have our help sessions, we do a lot of help around OneDrive, but we haven't done a session on it yet. Have you looked on Senior Planet or Global Learning? They may have some uh, right. videos on it also. I don't know about Senior Planet. Can you tell me, can you refer me to that? Is it seniorplanet.com? If, se if you go to seniorplanet.com, 
.org, I believe. I guess I'm not sure if it's .com or .org. So. Hold on. I, I subscribe to that. I do, too. It's seniorpanel.org. They have okay. uh, locations all over. They also have a national location, and they do a lot of content, a lot of content. Also, I would say to you, Elaine, there's, um, there is a plethora of very good YouTube videos on that. I there just put one. I just put one in the right. chat. There, there are some very good people yep. that have, that make excellent YouTube videos on that. <laughs> and I think what we'll do is um, maybe when I'll when I talk to Bill, I'll get Bill to we'll do a sort of an overview of what OneDrive is and sort of some of the generally sort of stuff and maybe point you in the right direction for specifics, because there's no point in redoing some of these excellent videos that have already been done and they already have all the, the real technical stuff all, all done. So, some of it's a little too technical and some of it, yeah. Anyway, right, right, I will, Ron. I will check those and thank you, Bob, for the referral to the YouTube and I'll check those too. I just thought maybe you guys had done something that I wasn't finding yeah. on your, um, yeah. PDF. The, uh, the link that I put in is for John Stratford, and there's nobody does better videos and tutorials than than he does, in my opinion, anyway. My former Microsoft employee, very good. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. The, okay, the, thank the, you. The, the biggest problem OneDrive is causing our users is when they set up a new computer. There's a yeah. question at the beginning of the setup about do you want OneDrive or local storage? And we've had to undo some messes with, with that question. That's probably partly what I'm dealing with because um, when I tried to, I have stuff on OneDrive, lots of images on OneDrive and I, I don't want to sync the computers, but I wanted to download one uh, image just to tweak it and to edit it. And then I wanted it to go back on OneDrive. I didn't want to save it on the computer. And it says, we're going to put this on your, we will download this to your computer so it's available offline. I don't want to download it to the computer so it's available offline. I just want to use it and put it back there. <laughs> well, you uh, do have to yeah. download it in order to edit it. And then you, yeah. can put it, then you can tell it you just want it on OneDrive. But yeah, it is confusing to set it up and, yep. and make sure that it works and things are where they're supposed to be. And, and then, it, but then it says saved on your computer, but I couldn't get back to it on my computer. So I don't know where it was yeah. saved. I couldn't find it when I went to Windows X or uh, File Explorer. Right. It's on your computer in the OneDrive folder. Oh, it's still in the OneDrive folder? Right. But on your computer. Okay. There's a reason I have all these images I saved on OneDrive is because on my uh, solid resides, state drive computer i don't have that much space one drive resides in two places always up in the cloud and that part that you want access to offline also resides on your computer okay. i got a few more I, elaine i got a few more questions i want to get done before we start okay right i'll check the other references thanks okay. a lot guys yeah. more coming more coming from bill <laughs> shortly <laughs> and you. all right uh carl go ahead Hey, I remember uh, about a year ago, you would always remind us to, uh, and I think Bob particularly about upgrading our Zoom to the latest version. Right. And I logged in today, maybe it does it all the time, but I just noticed it says waiting Posting up, one, two, three, to the four. latest version. Does it automatically. Yeah, it should. Sometimes it yeah, does. Your chat now, your voice now works. Hmm. Are you talking to me, uh, Bob? No, this is John Flower, who's been having a problem. Okay. He just popped up. Thanks, Carl. Drew, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to let that woman know that in the system tray, there is a setting in OneDrive where you can set your default for the files to be available always offline or online only. And that is if you go into the system tray and right click on the OneDrive icon and open up the settings setting. And it doesn't matter from which computer you're doing that. Correct. Well, you want to be consistent across all computers. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I save all these chat files into one drive. It's just, it's just right. a matter of doing save as, that's all. I think, I think 
one of the things, my impression, I mean, I use Google Drive and I use OneDrive. I really like OneDrive and I think Microsoft does actually a better job in integrating OneDrive in if you're using Windows. I really do like OneDrive. And I think that, I think, um, but I'm a Googler and I sort of use a lot of Google stuff, but I really think Microsoft has done a really good job with OneDrive. So it's probably, Elaine, probably a really good time that we maybe should do a bit more focus on OneDrive. I agree with you 100% on that. Okay. Um, and I think that that's, uh, that, that's a great, and, and you know, if, if anyone here has ideas that you want us to sort of follow through with, please, please let us know because we're, we're more than happy to sort of move in that, in that direction and do some work on that for you. So that will work out. And if anyone is new here, we'll be starting the meeting in about six minutes. If anyone here wants to say hello, you're new here. We're always anxious to meet new people. Uh, if you want to say hello, John, did you get your microphone going? Did you want to say something? Is it, am I back aloud? Yeah, we can, can you hear, hear me now. Line. Yeah, we can hear yes. you. Yes, wonderful. Okay, I posted an email address under the notes down below under chat, mm -hmm. and I had received emails that I question I hover over to see if it's legit and it came up with the same phony address 138 times mm -hmm. which I blocked and and left off it was that m-a-n-n-m-m-t-h-a at beauty a-r which I posted on the on the chat and I just wanted to warn anyone that uh I I got I didn't click on it to get scammed but it could have happened right Thank i mean you. i i rarely get scam email because I, I use uh, of course um gmail and it really does do a good job in, in yeah. figuring out the stuff i mean i just don't really get any problems and this one where i thought i had a problem with apple <laughs> like i don't get any email from apple i've never had an email from apple mm -hmm. and i get an email from apple and all of a sudden they want some personal information from me on I mean, what anyway it's it's not always easy yeah it's not always easy see detlef is on detlef are you uh here in the states or are you over in germany actually, actually i'm still in Berlin. Uh, I won't be coming to the States until two months from now. Where are you now? When? Where I'm are you now? Berlin. Oh, you in Berlin. I'm See, Berlin. I told you we're broadcasting to, yeah. to Europe. <laughs> so what time is it there? We're having this. Everyone has this time zone problem. What, 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 what time zone is it there? Five minutes before 6 p.m. Have you had dinner yet? <laughs> no, I was going to do it after we get done here. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, we'll be getting going in three minutes. So, Daryl, go, okay. go ahead. I just wanted to quickly mention, I know you guys are Chromebook advocates. I uh, recently installed that Chrome OS, OS Flex on a very old Toshiba. Yeah. And it's running just like it's brand new. There you go. There you Great. Go. That's good, good news. To know. Thanks. That's good. Good to know. Yes, indeed. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute today, but we had a really good session. Um, on our, if, uh, if they only made a version that you could put on a Chromebook that's expired. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that's the part that I wish they had readily available. Yeah. Which I don't know. Why would they do? Well, I don't know. Yeah, buy a new Chromebook. It had, no, it has to do with the, the security of the operating system on a Chromebook is, is uh, quite good. And it makes it difficult to replace the operating system on that machine. There are some workarounds, and I've looked at them, but it, it looked more difficult than I was yep. willing to jump in and try to do Same at the here. time. So I may, if I find some time, some somewhere along the way, I may. Uh, I've got a machine that is out of date and it's just sitting there, so I may try it on that. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and then no, no harm, no foul because it doesn't work anyway. Well, it works, but it's so out of date. Mine expired in June. June was its last That's update. So, well. yeah.
And the good news is um, Google is going to make a new Pixel book, which uh, probably my mine's good for probably a couple more years, and then uh, and then they'll we'll actually have a new Pixel book, which will be great. That's hey, great. a lot of people, a lot of people want to go to Mars. I want to go to this place you guys mentioned, Senior Planet. Senior Planet. <laughs> Yeah, uh, oh. it's excellent and it has a lot of classes um, on yeah. a lot of tech items. Uh, try Senior Planet Wednesday. It's called Lunch and Learn. He's talking about Google Sheets. Uh, the one I mentioned today is once a week. Very good teacher. And he goes over everything Android, which I put in the chat, by the way. We, Thanks so much. We've That's how you found us a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. playing into it through Senior Planet when I was on. Uh, yeah, okay. we, we've done a few uh, presentations to Senior Planet, uh, both in New York City and in in Denver, uh, yes. live and and remote. Yeah. Good. Yeah, they've asked Good me to around. do some for the Denver. AARP now is part of, or they're part of AARP now. Yep. Yes. Yes. Good. Um, Let's see. Who am I seeing talking? You're not lighting up on my screen. Sorry, sorry. Uh, we've got to. We've got to. We got to start the meeting now. I'm going to mute everyone, and we're going to get going with the meeting. Tech for Senior, episode 123. What do you think about that, Huey? You're muted. Yes, I am, aren't I? Uh, it just keeps uh, coming yeah. every week. It's uh, been great. Yeah. We keep uh, coming up with ideas to do the show. Yeah. August 1st, it's a long weekend in Canada. So we have um, those who in Canada have uh, lots of company. Probably, uh, it's uh, it's it was really hot this last week, and today it's nice and cool. So that's a that's a big breather for us. Um, anyway, we are so appreciative that uh, seventy two people uh, on this uh, this uh, August weekend, uh, August I guess uh, not weekend, but August. Are, are coming to uh, to watch the show. That's great. We we always say we get our energy from your enthusiasm. So today we have a big show for you. Uh, of course, it's uh, going to be taped, and at the end we also have a Q and A. And on this um, this week, our premiere service, uh, and I'll be putting the link in the chat, as well as uh, those of you who subscribe to our newsletter on Saturday get the uh, get the link and the agenda. For the uh, for the schedule today, and you would have seen the uh, the premiere video link. Uh, we have three selections today. Uh, Bob is going to talk on security tips for seniors. Uh, good topic. Uh, the second is Ray is going to talk on his updated, uh, very popular talk called "Music in the Car," and he uh, did an updated version of that. And we're going to play that again. And um, about a year and a half ago, I did a video. It came to, I did, it was a fairly quick video um, on, it was called the Misunderstood Fitbit Sense and I, uh, the watch, and I sent that out and it went viral. It really has done, it's the most successful video I ever did. And I did a second one called the, uh, the Fitbit Sense, Re Misunderstood Fitbit Sense Revised. And that was the second one I did. And that's what we're playing today is the, the latest in the revised one. So those will be our three selections that will occur at half past the hour after the, uh, after the Q&A. We, of course, have a, uh, our Thursday show, which is uh, um, Tech for Senior Live. 
And that's where we all get together and we talk and review the news of the week. And that has become as popular as this show. And it's, uh, it's, we're doing very well with that and having a lot of fun. So I would encourage you to come and listen on Thursday morning. It's not a, uh, it's not a Zoom meeting, though. It, uh, we broadcast that out to our Facebook page and our YouTube, um, YouTube channel. So if you want to listen, come participate in the, you can um, participate in the show. It's, it's a lot of fun and we have a good time with that. And then, of course, on, we podcast that show out on Friday. Uh, so if you wanted to listen to that as a podcast, you can certainly, uh, certainly do that. Uh, this week, I wanted to thank a special thanks to two, two people. Uh, one is uh, Ken Wood, and the other is Ann Titus for their very generous donation to, uh, to our fund. Um, it helps pay the bills and keeps us on the air, which is, uh, which is great. So thank, thanks so much for that. Uh, we do, really do appreciate it. Let me introduce everybody today. Uh, let's uh, introduce my, uh, my co-host today. Uh, Huey Popluck. Uh, Huey and I had a lot of fun last week. We did um, learning Chromebooks. We had a good time with that, eh? We certainly did. We had a good uh, good crowd and a lot of good discussion. Friend. It worked very well. It did. And uh, we had a bit of a different format. And we sort of reviewed Chromebook news because we do have a Chromebook Facebook page now in which we put um, all the news about Chromebooks that we accumulate through the month. And lots, there's lots of news about Chromebooks, eh, Huey? Yeah, we had uh, over 30 articles posted just for the month, and I've already uh, posted, I know, at least four or five, uh, and here it is only August 1st. Yeah, yeah, so that's good. So we had, we had a lot of fun with that. So if you uh, haven't, uh, we'll be doing again one in uh, the end of our August, and, uh, and uh, all the details are in our newsletter. If you um, if you haven't signed up, and I keep mentioning this, but there's still a lot of people that are uh, that follow us along and aren't don't get our newsletter. We really do put a lot of information in there about what we're doing and how to find things and so on and so forth. So and, uh, and anyway. some good articles at the at the bottom. So make sure you scroll all the way down to the bottom. That is for that is for sure. Bob, you've had a how's your week gone? Very well, thank you. You had at least you had the a busy temperatures weekend. of. Yeah, temperatures have calmed down a little bit. Right. I'm at 74, and we expect a high only in the low 90s. So that's good news. That's good news. And Ray, of course, is giving a big presentation today. He'll be talking about home theaters. Uh, Ray, how are are you watching lots of movies indoors? Is it really hot, or what's happening over in Pine, Arizona? Uh, yeah, I, I watch a share my share of movies. I, I watch uh, more uh, YouTube video clips. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try my hand at uh, talking a little bit about home entertainment systems, where they've been, where they are today. And this will be only be the first part. There's a lot to cover. So I'll do some future parts as well. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to that. And of course, Bill James. Bill, you're muted. Uh, Bill, our techie guy. There you can you hear me? It's uh, like 72 degrees here. So I, I'm okay. I'm not sure what the high is going to be. I think it's going to be in the 90s, but right now it's 72. So very good. All right. Well, that's good. So um, in the news this week, there was a couple of notable things that we want to talk about, and we'll be talking about these more. But uh, this morning it was just announced on the news, and it says Watch OS 9 gets Canada approval for atrial fibrillation history feature. So um, what is this all about? Uh, as you know, I've talked a lot. If you follow the channel, you know I'm a watch guy, and I, I talk a lot about watches. And if you're a senior, you should know what atrial fibrillation is, and because it's common for seniors, and it's a major cause of stroke. And as you know, um, the three watches that I always talk about are the uh, Apple Watch, the Galaxy Watch uh, 4, and the Fitbit Sense. And these all have an ECG feature where you... Um, take your ECG and it will tell you if you do or not do not have atrial fibrillation. All right. The problem of course being is that a lot of people don't know if they have atrial fibrillation, they don't have any fluttering or anything like that. So it's really hard to determine whether you have atrial fibrillation or not. Well, both Apple and Google, uh, we'll talk about Apple right now, are bringing out a new feature coming this fall that's been approved 
with Apple in the United States and also just as now in Canada, in which the watch will continually monitor your heart or atrial fibrillation. In other words, you do not have to push the button, do an ECG, have the ECG interpreted. This is going to continually monitor 24 seven, and then it will let you know uh, that uh, in the last 24 hours, maybe 5% of your heart rhythm is atrial fibrillation or 20% or 50%. So it'll, it'll continually monitor. This is a huge, huge feature. And it's gonna be, I, I suspect it will be free. It's, it's going to be an OS update and I don't think you'll have to do very much with it. We don't know yet, but uh, this is coming out this fall and I'm gonna be doing a lot of videos about this because it's, it's a, it is a really big feature. Um, and Google of course is doing the same and they have a study now uh, on, a, on, a, on the same situation. So they're gonna be looking at uh, their heart health uh, program going forward as well. So I'm super excited about this, and I think we need to talk a lot more about it. The other it will thing, affect it will affect your battery life, however. Probably, probably, yep. yes, yeah, probably. The other, the other, um, the other thing that's interesting is the big news uh, uh, is Amazon Drive going away, at least for some people. And we're going to talk all about cloud storage on our Thursday show this week. So if you want to find out about Amazon Drive and it going away and what are you going to do, come and listen to our Thursday show. All right, Bob, are you ready to roll? I hope so. There you go. Here is the Avast Security News Roundup for the week ending July 29th, 2022. Google backtracks on Android app permissions after outcry. Ever since app permissions were introduced in Android, the Google Play Store has listed all requested permissions on the listings for every app. Google started to hide the permissions section, but now the company is backtracking. Google confirmed this week on Twitter that it had removed the app permissions section on Google Play Store apps listing pages, but the company heard your feedback and has started to bring back the section. More recently, Google introduced a data safety section on Play Store listings, which are like app privacy labels on the Apple App Store, but the information is provided by the app developer instead of automatically generated from the app's code, like the permissions list. Even though the permissions data on the Play Store isn't too useful anymore, it doesn't hurt to keep it around. See more at How to Geek. TikTok hints it may have transferred U.S. data to China. TikTok has over 1 billion users worldwide with over 80 million in the U.S. alone. The platform's rising popularity in the U.S. sparked security concerns over the platform's data use practices. Lawmakers and think tankers fear China could use the social network to spy on the U.S. population and the military. According to a recent report, audio tapes from over 80 internal TikTok meetings at platform's owner ByteDance suggest that TikTok misled U.S. officials and platform users with claims that the data is stored in the U.S. and cannot be accessed by employees in China. Read more at Cyber News. Zuckerberg promises to make your Facebook and Instagram feeds even worse. If you feel like your Instagram and Facebook feeds have gotten worse, you're far from the only one. Many users have complained about a significant uptick in the number of posts they're served from accounts they don't follow, courtesy of Meta's annoying algorithm. With so many people deriding this change, you'd think the company would be working to reverse it. Alas, it seems Meta is instead doubling down. In Meta's second quarter earnings call on Wednesday, CEO Mark Zuckerberg made clear that not only is he aware that people's feeds are packed full of posts they didn't sign up to see, 
but that this is the company's plan. He also committed to make it twice as bad. See more at Mashable. A critical flaw found in popular GPS vehicle tracker. Researchers have discovered six vulnerabilities in the Mikadus MV720, a GPS tracker made by Chinese company Mikadus, which had 1.5 million tracking devices deployed across 420,000 customers in 169 countries. The vulnerabilities make it possible for attackers to remotely disable cars, track location histories, disarm alarms, and cut off fuel. The researchers, as well as the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Administration, have tried for months to engage with Mikadis, but without success. All six flaws remain unmitigated and unpatched. These kinds of trackers are notoriously poorly protected, and anyone using them is advised to turn them off immediately until patches are developed. For more, see Ars Technica. Healthcare industry needs cure for data analysis paralysis. In a new study by Centellus Performance Solutions, 420 healthcare finance leaders were surveyed on their financial outlook and possible plans for adopting analytics tool and advanced technologies in order to overcome the outdated systems and untrustworthy data being used by most healthcare organizations today. The study found that 61% still rely on outdated tools like spreadsheets and inadequate systems for decision making. The researchers behind the study suggest hospitals and healthcare organizations need to smartly invest in data analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning tools. For more on this study, see VentureBeat. So where should you store your recovery codes? You've taken steps to secure your digital services by enabling two-factor authentications. But what do you do with the recovery codes a service gave you to gain access if the usual authentication methods is unavailable? You need to keep recovery codes secure, but more importantly, keep them somewhere you'll have access to when you need them. Here are three suggestions. Option one, print out your recovery codes. Option two, store recovery codes in the cloud. And option three, keep recovery codes on a USB flash drive. You'll find a whole informative article on this topic at How to Geek. This week's must read on the Avast blog. Over the past few years, classrooms have moved to kitchens and bedrooms, and playgrounds have been replaced by online video games. The methods for making friends have forever been altered. Internet friendships are often more common than real-world relationships, and the future can only be forecasted as a complex mix of social media posturing, virtual chat rooms, and in-person awkwardness. Read the whole article at the link listed. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and get involved. And that wraps up this week's Avast Security News Roundup. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Hello. Picture in picture. Here's how you can do two things at the same time. Here's my little problem this morning. I'm trying to keep an eye on an outside cam, but I also want to help some folks on the Avast Support Forum. How do I do both? Simple. If you're using a Chromium-based browser, and it doesn't matter, right now I happen to have the Avast Secure Browser open, but this will work on almost any Chromium-based browser. 
which means Chrome, Edge, any of the others that you can think of. Go back to the actual cam itself, do a right click on the picture, and select Picture in Picture. Now you'll notice this went dark, and right here is the actual picture in picture. Now I can go back to the Avast Support Forum, and look, I'm still watching my cam, but I can now go ahead and start answering some of the questions and some of the problems that someone's posted on the Support Forum. One way to do two things at the same time. After all, time is precious. Multitasking is one way to solve a time dilemma. And as you get older, you got less time, so you might as well put whatever you can to use in your favor. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. By the way, you can always go back to the tab directly from here. Just select it, and now you're back to the tab. Of course, at that point, I don't have the picture here anymore, but right click, picture in picture. Now I can go back here and it's back on that other website. Bye bye. Great advice, Bob. That's uh, that's what I'm going to try. I, I forgot that. That's great. Great. I, that's why I wanted you to put that in today. It's uh, Multitasking and saving us time. Wonderful. Especially important for old folks who have <laughs> less time. Time is short. Time is short. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, listen, this is a, I'm looking so forward to this. This is Ray Baxter is going to be talking on uh, home theaters. Now, um, Ray asked that we do a little poll before before he starts his session. We want to, we want to gather some information from everyone. So you're going to see, I'm going to be putting a poll up and we just ask you to complete it. We don't want your social insurance number or your phone cover or your credit card number. Ray wanted to put those in, but I said, no, we can't ask for their credit card number. So we just want you, we're going to ask you a few, few questions here and, uh, and then we're going to get on with the presentation. So uh, I'm just going to put this up now and we'll see if everyone can, um, if you just wouldn't mind completing that. You should all be able to see that, unless, of course, you're uh, co-hosts. And if you just uh, could go through, there's four questions, and it will give you about five minutes to uh, to complete it, and then we'll get on with Ray's presentation. Can everyone see the poll? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Don't, don't forget, there are more questions, so you scroll down. Yeah, scroll the down. There's four questions. Go ahead, Kathleen. Did you have a question? Um, I can't answer some of the questions because I don't have a TV or a any kind of movie thing, so I don't know. Okay, that's fine. That's me. fine. Okay, it won't let me submit. So, okay, don't don't um, if you if it um, if you can't if it's not appropriate then just if it's not worry. appropriate just close the poll with the little just X in the poll. right hand yeah. corner. Okay, thank you. Somebody sing or something while we're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to be me. It won't Bingo. be me. Either. I've got a question on Netflix. I see it's fifteen ninety five a month here in the States. But I heard uh, somewhere, I don't know where, that they were going to start charging uh, for your friends who you allow to use it. Um. Well, they're getting a little more strict on that. You, currently, I think there's five family members you can split your Netflix account with. Um, but uh, and and they're supposed to be cracking down a bit on that. Um, but I haven't seen any evidence of that. I know I share it with my family members and it hasn't really affected anyone yet. So 
uh, I think maybe coming, but not at present. They're also I, going to make another tier that's going to have advertising in it. So you're going to be paying uh, a little less money, but you're still going to be paying money and you're still going to get ads. I never knew how many you were allowed to have, but uh, I know the five number that comes to mind is with Microsoft Office, you could have up to five. Right, right. So that's, we'll, if, that's if you bought that plan. Right. You can, so if, you can, Microsoft Office, you can buy either a plan for one or you can add the, or the family and that family is five additional people. So you can have up to six people on that account. Yeah, $99 a year, but now they charge taxes. Taxes don't go to Microsoft. They go to your state. So remember that when you vote in November. Right. Yeah, they only go to your state if you're if they're registered. Most times they're not. And they just keep them. I always thought, well, I'm in Michigan and we never charge taxes on service. Isn't that a service? It's a product. All right, so Ray. I think we've done our five All minutes. Right. Um, I just wanted to let everyone. Um, I think I'm going to share the results, uh, so you can you can see. Um, I think, Ray, if you want to have a look at this. Um, yeah, here's what I'd like to do. Uh, make sure you, you save this poll, send it to me, or I'll see if I can figure it out later. And I, I want to talk about this at, a, at our next okay. meeting as opposed to trying to cover it now, because I want to actually give some more thought to it than just a couple of seconds. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, so we'll stop sharing uh, and uh, take it away. All right. Home entertainment systems. Now this is gonna be part one, which is the evolution of home entertainment. And then I'm gonna give you an introduction to the audio video receiver. And let's face it, folks, we've come a long way from one speaker inside a television set. Now I wanna preface that I am not a audiophile. I know there's folks on our session today that have a lot more experience and a lot more knowledge than I do, but let me just tell you where I'm coming from. Uh, the evolution of home entertainment, where did that all start? Well, it probably started with someone playing an instrument and perhaps singing to uh, while the rest of the family or friends gathered close by to watch and listen. You know, this was uh, before the technology age. Uh, what then came was listening to radio broadcasts. And I remember as a young boy having a large console unit that was part of the main room's furniture. And where one or more would be able to listen to world and local news and a variety of music offerings. Now, the one in my home actually had a, a built-in shortwave radio band. Uh, black and white televisions, they, they came next, replacing radio. And the family members could now watch as well as listen with early screen sizes smaller than today's computer monitors. Uh, television turned into color and came in a variety of sizes with some households having as many as two. Imagine having two TVs in your house. And then the CRT cathode ray tube televisions became digital and the rest is a history we've all experienced. So home entertainment has changed. Yes, thanks primarily to COVID-19. There may have been other factors, we are mostly staying at home now to watch movies instead of going to the local theater. There's a trade-off. Instead of watching on a giant screen from far away, we're looking at a big screen television from several feet away. That is many pros to this. Streaming provides thousands of choices more than the largest movie theater ever could. And you don't have to contend with the couple behind you talking while the movie is playing. Or how about the kids kicking your seat while you're trying to watch the movie. Refreshments are nearby and usually exactly what you're in the mood for. And you can be dressed pretty casually. How about even in your pajamas? And travel time is measured by going from one room to another. Now there is one big con. Unless you have a quality sound system, your ears are missing the sensory impact that today's modern technologies provide. So this is where the audio video receiver comes in. 
Uh, these AV receivers, in one respect, haven't changed too much from the two functions that were provided at one time when these were separate units, separate components. You have an amplifier, and that takes a small signal and increases it to provide enough power so you can hear sound from your speakers. And then the older standalone receiver, that provided the AM, FM radio tuner, uh, the preamp that was necessary to increase power for a turntable, uh, volume controls, input selections, and more. Today's modern audio video receiver works with the latest audio and video technologies from several sources, including streaming services, DVD and Blu-ray players, gaming devices, even your smartphone. Now, this is what gets confusing with, I think, the AV receivers, the different kinds of speaker connections that you can have. And they're all based on a number. And the number tells you everything. Now, I put down 2.0 here, and uh, that's not really for video, though. It's a basic two stereo speaker set up typically used to listen to music. The two represents two speakers. And the next one is 2.1. And the, the point one, when you see that point one number, that's adding to the above a subwoofer that for the additional bass and depth. 3.1 adds a center channel speaker. This is really helpful when watching movies to help with the dialogue. 5.1 is probably the most popular setup that adds two rear speakers, and now you have surround sound. 7.1 adds to above two more rear speakers for fuller surround sound. And some people in a real large room might want to have a second subwoofer. That would be 7.2. And now there's even a third decimal point coming into play. This adds two ceiling or upward firing speakers. These are now known as Dolby Atmos, and that gives height to surround sound. What do I mean by height? Well, for example, if the sound of a helicopter in a movie, you'll actually be hearing that from above instead of from the sides. So when you're looking at buying an audio receiver, you'll see these kinds of numbers in the, in the description, and that's telling you what that receiver is capable of handling. Now, audio video connections, they went from simple to complex, and now thankfully they're back to simple. You had composite, and we call them the RCA plugs, and you could tell them easily. They were identified by the colors at the end. Uh, the red one was for the right speaker, the white for the left speaker, and the yellow for video. No longer used in modern equipment because this setup does not support high definition. The HD picture quality we, we also much enjoy. Uh, you had S video for a while, the S stood for super, and that was an improvement in quality to the yellow, but also does not support HD. And then component came around. This was probably at the beginning of the 2000s. And that was a video quality improvement that required three more RCA cable type cables. These colors were blue, green, and red, just to transmit the different parts of the video signal, the color and the brightness. Now with this setup, you had these three video connections plus two more for audio, for every video source you had, such as a, a VHS player. This is what the back of a receiver might have looked like in those days, trying to have a con connectivity for every possible connection. So high definition came into place. HDMI, high definition multimedia interface, a very welcome addition to the world of audio and video connectivity because it replaced all the numerous wire connections needed for a multimedia experience to just one cable. This one cable provides both high definition video and uh, it's time for a phone call. Uh, high definition video and multi-channel audio that is commonly found in today's theatrical movies and it's a versatile connection, which is found on input devices like today's modern smart televisions, as well as output devices that include computers, gaming consoles, Blu-ray and DVD players. So this is what you should know about the HDMI specifications as a consumer. Now the connectors, there's actually uh, three different types of connector. Type A is the one we're all used to, standard, most common full-size connection, but there was a type C known as the mini HDMI. And that was a smaller version. And for a while that was popular on cell phones. And then there's even a type D, the micro HDMI. 
that goes on very small devices like a GoPro camera. And then the cable types are based on speed needed for sufficient bandwidth. So the standard will work just fine for a full HD experience using the, the 1080p protocol. Uh, you need to get the high speed cable if you're going to be involved with 4K resolution. And then there's also a cable known as ultra high speed, and that's for certain 4K and 8K resolution. Yes, 8K resolution is here. This is for you, Ron, because I know you're going to want to go out and buy one. A Samsung 65 inch 8K smart TV from Amazon is only $6,695.98. Now, this is the back panel of a modern audio video receiver. Eliminated are the connections for the video component and the yellow RCA cables. Instead, there are five HDMI inputs plus digital analog audio connections. A picture is worth a thousand words before and after. So what does your money buy you when you're purchasing a receiver? And now these are details and prices that are shown on Amazon. In July, I'm not going to read all these details. I will point out that, say, with the uh, the first one, uh, the Onkyo at $329, I always look at user ratings. And this got 4.4 .4 out of 5 from 467 folks. And notice it says it's 5.2. So this tells you just by looking at that number what the speaker connectivity is. But the next one is, the, is a Sony. This is the, personally, this is the model I have at home. And uh, this one got 4.5 out of five from over 1,800 different user ratings. Uh, and then the, the more expensive one, the Denon, uh, what does this have that makes it cost even more? Well, this has the ability to operate speakers in two different rooms from one receiver, and it works with Alexa and Siri, so you control functions with voice. Again, it uh, just depends on how much you need in the way of a receiver, with how the prices range and the, the differences in them. So that's basically the end of part one. Now in part two, I'm gonna cover more focus on speaker choices. Uh, the choices you have are multiple speakers. They're, they're very popular today, sound bars. Uh, I know many folks who use headphones. And this is one I just learned recently. There are actually what's called neck band speakers that go around your neck for those people that don't like the, the speakers in the ear. So that's the end of this presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Ray. That was, oh, wow, that's pretty exciting. I, um, I had some family here this weekend and they uh, were watching a football game and I don't watch much TV, but they they switched over to, uh, they found an, that it was being broadcast also in 4K and they switched over the channel and then, oh my gosh, you could see every blade of grass. It was like unbelievable what 4K really does, eh? Oh yeah, and, and that's 4K. Yeah. 8K is twice the resolution. I'm off to Costco. Well, Costco's <laughs> closed here. Ray, Costco's <laughs> closed today here, but I'll be there tomorrow. All right. I, I know you. I'm will. on the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, where is uh, Huey? Huey, are you ready to roll? Mm -hmm. I am. I'm probably muted. No, nope, I'm not. We can hear you. We can hear you. And let's do this. Hope I got the right version. Tech for Seniors present the website of the week with Huey Poplock. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Have you ever wanted to fix an issue with a company and it's difficult to even find a phone number for that company? When you find the phone number, you call them and then you have to choose between one get this, two get that, three get this, and then once you press that number, then you have more choices. By the time you finish, you're not sure if you're in the right place. And then it says, we value your business. Please hold and a representative will be with you shortly. Don't you just love that? I'm Huey Poplock and I'm going to tell you how you can fix your customer service issues faster through a website called GetHuman.com. Let's take a look at an example using this website to get an idea of what you can find out 
and what it does for you. Let's type in the name of a company. Let's use GoDaddy, and as soon as we type in a few of the letters, it gives us a, a sample, and when we click on that, let's examine this page to see what Get Human will do for us and what we need to be careful of. So, we're looking for a phone number for GoDaddy. They list a customer service number. They say the current wait time is 20 minutes. If you want to skip waiting on hold, you push this button. Let's do that and see what happens. They want you to put in your phone number. So skip hold and get called by GoDaddy.com. The Get Human phone waits on hold so you don't have to and calls you when a rep can talk and it's free. You tell them what phone number to call you back on. They'll start dialing GoDaddy.com and the estimated time you say by letting them wait for hold is 19 minutes. We build this free tool for customers to skip past phone menus and long waits. We hope you like it. We are often asked why and how we do this. And the answer is easy. For one, we don't think that you should have to wait on hold for long periods of time to talk to organizations you do business with. As for how, the calls are expensive for us to make, but you can see we offset that cost by showing you advertisements on this website. We hope this saves you some time. Now, those advertisements, you need to be very careful. If you click on one, and I did, just to see how much it actually would cost me. This one, it says, chat with an expert online now. And when you open it, it opens up. Let's do it. It takes you to another website, gives you a person ready to talk to, and you're ready to talk. However, what you don't see really easily is right here. It says, okay, got it. I'm sending you a secure page to join this company for only $1, fully refundable. When you're filling out that form, I'll tell the expert about your situation and then connect you to. Well, that $1 is just a trial. If you accept it, you then are charged $50 per month for the service. So we're not really interested in doing that. Okay, so we're back to the GoDaddy page again. So be careful on pressing any of the ads. There's another one up here. There's a, there, we, we chose that one. Here's another one over here. They all are going to charge you money. Get Human does not. So here's how it works. Tell us what phone number to call you on when we have a GoDaddy rep for you. We dial, navigate through their phone maze and wait on hold for as long as it takes while you relax or do as you please. When we finally reach an agent, we call you back. You pick up the phone and talk to GoDaddy.com. Simple. We get it. The phone menus are confusing and so on. So it goes and it, it saves you the time and they do it for you. Now, why is it free? We get that question a lot. It sounds too good to be true, right? Well, the truth is that the service costs a lot of money to run since we call you back with when a rep can talk. Given that over 100,000 customers per day use GetHuman, that's a lot of phone calls to pay for. By being innovative and leveraging technology, we're able to operate the service at a reasonable cost such that we can keep it running. To have them call you back, you just put in your phone number. Right now, the average time is 19 minutes. Let's look at a different company. As we go back, we see another ad. We're going to close that. Facebook. Let's click on that. They give you a phone number. But they also tell you nobody answers this number. Their best help, Facebook's help desk. Instead, and that's a link and it takes you to it. Instead, tell us why you're calling, get human, walks you through our best tools, fastest contacts and reminders. So they have some things. So if you're having a problem with a page, you click that. I'm going to click it and tell it to open it in a new tab so we don't lose our spot. Then we go to that tab. You fill some, some information out. They will take that information and try to match it to a guide that they have written to help you. 
So they will try to help you even there, even if there isn't a phone number or you don't want to use the phone number. Let's use one we were talking about the other day on Tech for Senior, and that's going to Costco. Now, you'll notice here you've got Costco.com, but you also have Costco Canada. And I know several of you are from Canada, so let's take a look at that first. It gives you a customer service number, tells you what the wait time is, and the number. And then it gives you some sample questions that you might have. And then there's some information about the customer number by the numbers. Is there a callback available? And there's no. But is there a call picked up by a real person? Yes. And then navigate through the uh, maze to a human, press one, then one, then four, then one, and that should get you to a human being. The current wait is six minutes, and it was last updated on the 28th of July. And this time, Costco US, there's a customer service. There is a wait time of 17 minutes. If you want to skip that, you click this, and they will call you back when there's a human being to talk to. So let's see what else they have on the website. As we scroll down, there are all of the most popular phone numbers of several companies here. You can choose any one of those, or you can go to all companies A to Z. When you do that, you'll see the alphabet is available. They have several pages of them. That way they get an ad in each time you change the page. And down here at the bottom, how-to guides. Let's take a look at how-to guides. These are recently searched companies and they have guides for them. So if we wanted a Walmart guide and they have many questions that people have asked, how do I get a refund from Walmart? And they have a guide for that. Notice another ad. Now there's an ad over here. So you've got to be careful what you choose, but you can read down here and it tells you the process and the information that you have to have. And again, another ad, or why did get human write, how do I get a refund from Walmart? Because after thousands of Walmart customers came to get human in search of an answer to this problem and many others, they decided it was time to publish instructions. So you can find a lot of instructions and a lot of ads. So there, is, there are many guides to take a look at. Here are recently searched phone numbers, and these are some of the major companies that people have been looking for. To help find a company phone number, get right to a rep, gethuman.com a try. But be careful, don't click on the ads or realize you're clicking on an ad that may cost you money. Gethuman.com, website of the week. I'm Huey Poplock. Huey, that is fantastic. Oh my gosh. I am going to be using that. That is a wonderful find. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Excellent. Glad Bob, are you Bob, are you ready to roll? I am. We're going to talk about old church search protectors and what you need to be careful about. Did you realize that old surge protectors can turn out to be a fire hazard? There's nothing better than knowing that your valuable electronics are safe. And surge protectors give you that peace of mind for a very low price. But only if you replace them every few years. While the old surge protectors in your home may seem to function normally, they likely offer zero protection for your electronics. They can also become a fire hazard. So how do surge protectors work? Most people use the term power strip and surge protector interchangeably. But a power strip is just a big plastic thing that gives you extra outlets. Surge protectors are much more useful. Not only do they give you extra outlets, but they regulate the amount of power that your electronic devices receive. Think of surge protectors like a pressure release valve. When the incoming voltage is too high, 
they send it to the ground instead of letting it hit your electronics. And if the voltage is too low, your surge protector increases resistance to keep electronics functioning normally. A surge protector can keep your electronics online during a voltage sag. They're most useful during power surges. As the name implies, a power surge sends an excess of voltage through your home wiring. This spike in voltage can destroy or damage electronic devices. And unfortunately, the damaged electronics are a common source of house fires. Surge protectors are an essential item in any home, and at the very least, you should use them to defend valuable electronics from power surges. But you can't just use the same surge protector for the rest of your life. They need to be replaced every few years. Unfortunately, surge protection wears out over time. When surge protectors receive an excessive load of electricity, they divert or shunt the extra power to ground using a metal oxide varista. But in the process of diverting its power, the move exposes itself to the excess voltage. And over time, it wears out. Every surge protector has a rating that describes how much excess voltage the move can handle. This rating is in joules. Most power strips are equipped for 800 or 1,000 joules, while more expensive models can handle several times that amount. But this rating is cumulative. It's like health points in a video game. If a surge protector that's rated at 1,000 joules is hit by 100 joules during a thunderstorm, then it can only handle another 900 joules. Once a surge protector's health points fall to zero, it no longer offers surge protection. It can become a simple power strip that won't protect your electronics or your home. As I mentioned in the beginning, old surge protectors are a fire hazard. Once a surge protector is used up, it becomes increasingly sensitive to low voltages. And that's a problem, because it will still try to soak up excess voltage and send power to the ground. If it's hit by a large power surge, it may become damaged, which creates a fire hazard. It could also overheat and immediately catch fire. Plus, an old surge protector offers little protection for your electronic devices. These devices may become damaged due to the lack of surge protection, and that damage leads to its own fire risks. Even if we ignore surge protection altogether, surge protectors tend to be crammed behind furniture and appliances. They're in the nastiest parts of your home, and they collect dust, crumbs, hair, and dead bugs, flammable stuff that slowly builds up over the years. These are not theoretical risks. As the Consumer Safety Guide explains, functional surge protectors lower the risk of a house fire, but old or broken surge protectors are often the cause of a fire. So please, replace your old surge protectors. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and get involved. So the right question to ask is, when should you replace a surge protector? Unfortunately, you can't really tell when a surge protector needs replacing. Experts generally agree that you should replace surge protectors every two or three years, which is good but a somewhat costly rule of thumb. And while you might think that a fancy surge protector will last longer than one that's only rated for 200 joules, that isn't necessarily the case. A large power surge can exceed a thousand joules and instantaneously wear out the more expensive surge protectors in your home. A high jewel rated simply provides extra peace of mind, especially for valuable or sensitive electronics. There are some power strips that have a surge protection LED. 
This light will turn off or turn on to tell you that surge protection is no longer functioning properly. It's a useful feature, especially when paired with sensitive electronics, but it isn't 100% reliable. When you buy a new surge protector, I suggest writing the date on its backside. That way you'll know to replace it when it's two or three years old. Think about recycling old surge protectors when it becomes time. Every city has its own recycling process. If there aren't any dedicated e-waste facilities in your area, you may need to call your city's waste department for recycling instructions. Or you could use a website to find a recycling location near you. It might be easier to go to Best Buy for electronics recycling. All Best Buy locations offer e-waste recycling and may give you a gift card if you recycle something of value. Be sure to read the detailed article on this topic by Andrew Heinzman at Review Geek at the following link. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bob. Uh, good advice. Uh, we need to put a little as date my, on the back of our yeah, surge protector. As my wife said, you give good advice. When are you going to follow it in our house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. Listen, uh, it's time uh, to say goodbye to all our friends over on uh, YouTube. Thank you so much for coming and listening to us today. Uh, don't forget the premiere service. I put the link in the uh in the chat uh, for our uh, service. If you uh, will be back same time, same place next uh, next week. Uh, if you want to come over, we've got room in uh, uh, here for you to participate in the Q and A. We're going to start with uh, Ray section, music section now. Uh, Ray, take it away. <laughs>